So a few others, like what, what do you do when you have more than two groups, right? In Dragonfly, we often talk about comparative questions and that gets you to think about one thing versus another and you just end up doing a t-test, which is awesome. But a lot of times you have three groups, right? Um, so let's take a quick look, close out at um, a data set. So if you click, if you go into the spreadsheet, if you're working on that, there's an ANOVA spreadsheet and ANOVA stands for analysis of variance. Um, in this case, we have some interesting data here. We have a whole number of countries um, and you can do control down and there's 190, actually, we have 191 countries we have the GDP per person adjusted for differences in purchasing power. And we have 2014 CO2 emissions in tons per person. Super interesting and cool data, I think. Um, and you can get this freely. There's a lot of free uh, data available now, but Gapminder is a really interesting site. It has this stuff. Um, now, the way I would probably approach this would be um, that there, there is probably a correlation between GDP per person and the number of the CO2 emissions per person. So wealthier countries would have more CO2 reactions in, or um, uh, CO2 emissions. And we would use a correlation or regression for that, which is what Jill's going to show with a different data set. But for the purposes of the ANOVA, I just want to show you all, um, you could categorize these into groups like low um, medium and high. And if you did that, it would be best to not just arbitrarily say, you know, low is 631 to, because if you arbitrarily set that, you as an experimenter can just change it and make it fit whatever might be a significant result. And that would be bad. So keep in mind, if you're ever converting numerical data into categorical data, you, gotta, you should have a good justification for where you make those cutoffs. And that could be based on some report or some sort of something, right? Um, so um, the way we would do this again, we have three groups, so low, medium, and high. We're gonna run an ANOVA on this. So let me go back here. Here's another handy calculator you guys can go to. Um, maybe actually we can throw this in the um, in the chat if someone wants to put that in there, that would be good. Um, and this site, it just says one way ANOVA calculator. Because it's free, they're going to be spamming you with all these these ads all over the place. So um, anyway, um, and they have it set up as three treatments, uh, up to five treatments. But here we are going to go and just grab the data for low. There we go, control C, copy it, put it in the treatment there. Look at that, it copied in all of that data. You always wanna just double check, make sure it's copying everything in. Go down to the next group. Copy that, put it in treatment two. And then our finally, our final level. And look who's at the bottom there. Isn't that interesting? Qatar with this very high media or uh, GDP. And look at that, tons of CO2 per person, 43.9. Um, but anyway, we'll put that in here. So we're looking at, we'll have to remember treatment one, two, and three, what those are. Um, we have a significance level. It, can, it allows you to choose a different alpha, okay? Um, we'll just go with this, the standard, which is 0 0.05, and then hit calculate. And I love it when these sites have a nice blue success um, there. And they say, they have an explanation here. You can read it. Um, they're going to give a p-value at the bottom. 
If your text is blue, your result is significant. If it's red, it's not. Um, and it gives you a data table here. This is actually how you would calculate a ANOVA by hand, um, by, by just your own calculations, how you would do the stats. So again, I'm not getting into that. We're not gonna go into that thing. It gives standard deviation for the different groups. Um, and then we're gonna go out down here and we see our p-value less than 0 0.00001. The result is significant at p less than 0 0.05. So there you go, you know. Now, what, what does this tell you? It tells you there is some difference between these three treatments, low, medium, and high income countries in terms of and you may surmise, and you would be correct, that the high-income countries give off more CO2. But um, right now, this is just saying, you would just conclude there is a difference, a significant difference in these three groups. And there's additional things you could do to look at that further, um, which I'm not going to go into now. Also, um, if your data was not normally distributed, there is a Kruska-Wallis calculator. I'm not going to run this one due to time. Um, but look at it, it looks exactly, you know, the same setup as the ANOVA, but this is just when you don't have normally distributed data. So you would use this and it's just going to tell you, are these three groups significantly different or not, or five groups, how many groups you have, okay?